Louis Farrakhan, uh, I did mention his name and so I figure out I give you I give you my ABC about American politics, how it works. You're probably surprised because I didn't say Louis Farrakhan. Instead, I mentioned American diplomacy politics, basically. How they get to murder people, industry of death, basically, is what I'm going to talk more about in this video. You can call this MK Ultra, which show whatever you like. Uh, but it was Bill Clinton who used to deliver me to Louis Farrakhan in later stage. That's interesting because Louis Farrakhan was involved in this case since my childhood. Uh, and what he would do is he observed the whole thing from the distance in his interest in his highest interest was to use me to meet to interact with politicians from around the world did so quite successfully meeting uh, all kinds of people people from India people from Russia people from uh, globally Yossi Brostito had his apartment in uh, New York found his way uh, to meet Yossi Brostito to this apartment in New York. It was all kinds of people there. This apartment of Yossi Brostito became like American Central Intelligence Agency Federal Bureau Investigation uh, hub for a crime brokerage and that no wonder, no, and they claim they had no access to that place. And that's not true at all. They had a lot of access to that place. They had access when it comes to wherever in the United States of America, they always have access to whatever. They always have access. They always, there's nothing in the United States of America, especially when it comes to government people, foreign government people and foreign offices, foreign buildings, that American Central Intelligence Agency Federal Bureau investigation would not have access to absolutely everywhere. And if they don't have access to and they know that is some illicit stuff going on and which was what they claimed me and it's what went on, uh, it's their fault. They are liable. They are guilty of committing crime. Uh, using, therefore, foreign politician on their own sovereign American soil to cause harm, uh, as it was to, to individual, even if it's from abroad or whatever individual, baby in this case, the United States of America government is hell liable for it. Uh, Louis Farrakhan learned about division between me and between Belgrade and between the Russia, between the Moscow, the hatred. Uh, the tensions which they were paying for basically to get me killed as much as possible in Europe if not get me killed and became some sort of broker once I grew up somewhat uh, and this goes to This goes to about age, a period when he became a broker, when he started to broker crime against me, literally black crime against me, violence, rage. In New York, there was no white people that would commit crime. Everything was black, pitch dark, black. That's it. White people, no white people in the picture. That's it. New York was... 100% black city in my eyes. 100% black. Everything was black until I was, until I actually grew up. That was New York. New York. If you were to get idea, map from my head about the New York, everything was black. Black, completely black was black. That was New York. New York was a black city. I did not know New York was a white city. 
during MK Ultra until I was probably 18 years of age. And it was nothing other than violence, chaos, lynching, chaos, lynching. No, I'm not saying the black people committed it. Um, here's what I have to say about uh, Louis Farrakhan. When I was young, baby, child, he found his way and I was delivered in his settings. Strange settings, really. Um, even, I don't know. Calm settings. We became calm settings. Calm settings, sometimes it was calm, sometimes it was hectic. Home settings, settings where I would have people, where he would have people at the gate uh, protesting to the degree that uh, they, he really enjoyed the fact that, that uh, he, he got attention, that he earned uh, enormous attention in this case. And this was literally talk about people being shot, killed, and people really were shot, people really were killed. This was no joke. Um, with using a personal guards that were armed, uh, enjoying attention of having people at the entrance for whom it wasn't clear that, you know, if they're gonna enter inside, the order to his guards was to literally shoot. Obviously, uh, and as stuff was done, I believe, for the purposes of a paranoid schizophrenia, to make me believe that something terribly is happening, and just about any time it can be shooting, it can be a shootout, and we can all be killed. And this was Louis Farrakhan. This was Louis Farrakhan, and this was his family, this was his kids. Um, basically home from which I didn't know if I'm going to walk alive, if I'm going to stay alive. Um, somebody who had his children administer and run, literally lynching, torture in New York through certain MK Ultra locations, very affiliated with the US government. There is written stuff about him, all kinds of stuff here that he had problems with, uh, I don't know, ADL, and that he is <clears throat> anti-Semitic. Um, it mentions something, Vizento Center, mentions FBI and stuff like this. Uh, actually quite exciting here, ADL, uh, quite exciting resume really. Uh, this individual is a Federal Bureau Investigation Central Intelligence Agency uh, worker, employee, and I would not subscribe to his any point of view that he has here to say. Uh, I'm going to put it this way, in my case, I have the reason to view it that way because of what I explained during MKUltra. Uh, U.S. government work with all of these uh, extremists. Uh, you can say that I was used for the espionage purposes, whatever that might be. The fact of the matter is that in the course of this video, you're going to learn that there was much, much, much more to it. They worked diligently with one another to create a case of uh, schizophrenia out of this MK Ultra disaster, uh, which was used by the wealthy people, just elites, politicians, and political agendas they had to have somehow transition time into some different time when, you know, they usually release the truth about 50 or 100 years after whatever. You know, I'm 53 and they still keep the truth under the rug, under the table, and just 
insist basically on something that it's called violence in my from my point of view in my eyes um, it got uh, Russians totally bewildered because he associated with me and in his settings still I'm trying to find when this shit went on the stuff I'm talking about right now is like relatively late but the problem is because when I finished, when I finished uh, grammar school, that means I was like age 14. Um, hell, that was probably 1986, before, seventh grade of the grammar school. So that I would, for that matter, I was born in what, 71, 72. And you would add probably about another 13 years to this. So you get 1985, 1984, I would even say. Um, Louis Farrakhan, for the first time, I heard really somebody giving me promises is going to kill me. Uh, I refuse to see myself in his daughters. I refuse myself to see in his relative, female relative, that he insisted on my choosing for a marriage for the matrimony purposes. Uh, and the biggest insult was to him because I told him that I want more than one wife. Uh, I initially agreed to it. This is what fucked him up the worst. Uh, and I, I had on my mind the way he presented this stuff was like uh, I'm going to get married to Mariah Carey or uh, and actually not only Mariah Carey but also to Jennifer Lopez together made an impression with me all of a sudden that this matrimonial offer started to rain really when I was like 14 years old, 13 years old 12 years old kid and um Oh, this stuff went all parallel to violence. They never were doing one thing only. It was always one thing and another one at other location and so on. And so uh, this girl started to get serious about dating and stuff. Uh, when I was like 12 years old, 13, 14 years old, you know, Louis Farrakhan presented me with this, uh, this concept that I would convert to Islam and stuff like this. I did not even understood what the fuck was that. I mean, simple, I didn't consider any of that. Lived here in Slovenia and only visited the US whenever I was hijacked there. And it didn't appeal to me. And this guy did not handle the rejection very well at all because for one thing, he was a political figure. He saw himself justly even uh, as somebody First of all, he reminded very much of Josip Broz Tito, if you paid attention to his facial features. And through my case, this guy started to see himself as, uh, as you know, one of those political figures, even royalties, that brokered through this, through this case. In one side, people have nothing, really. On the other side, you have kings and queens. So, the contrast to the two groups couldn't be greater from people somewhere in Africa who had nothing and on the other hand, British royals over there in Britain uh, or, I don't know, emperors in Japan or whatever. The contrast was a tremendous contrast to the people who were involved in this case and for whom chances even exist that somehow they could bump in one another in the lifetime. Um what for the most of the people is actually not really realistic but this is what what this case has had and so um in a way i betrayed his uh, trust 
Uh, what went on with this? What, uh, the worst part was when I presented him with the idea that I will get married to at least two, three women and stuff like this. Um, something he had not done it. All true, he did have women, you know. Uh, but uh, he looked at me. Uh, first, it was not acceptable, you know. Then, second thing, uh, it was Louis Farrakhan appealed to me, first of all, because a very appealing guy, very good looking guy, one thing. And he knew that. He knew that I liked him because the way he looks, you know, because the way he looked. Uh, and secondary, uh, at the beginning of the time of, of uh, Farrakhan and myself, I even found peace, tranquility in his place. Little did I know that this was, this was, this was a devil's hall, literally devil lived there. The tranquility that I got at the Louis Farrakhan place was part of the Josip Bros Tito agenda, who suggested the American side that they're not really taking seriously the words they say, opposed to Richard Nixon, who started this genocide against me. This is a very complex video, but it very, very much explains American diplomacy. That's why I titled when I started the video, I talked about American diplomacy, about American government crime. I didn't want to refer to even Louis Farrakhan. Yeah. Lo uh, Josip Bros Tito responded to a genocide procedure of Richard Nixon, uh, who commenced one through conspiracy that I would be used as somebody who would alert <clears throat> eastern part of Europe with Russia uh, about just how impossible it is to deal with the black people, how problematic they are. And every crime, every genocide that it pertains to MK Ultra, it always starts like this. What the Richard Nixon meant was he most likely took the order, he was a wager political waiter, just like every other president or prime minister or politician. Uh, however, decisions really are made through the White House in the U.S. And so what Richard Nixon meant, really what he really meant is what Josip Bros Tito came up with on the picture afterwards. Uh, they were trading the blows with one another through literally lynching, killing me. From one side, it was Richard Nixon who was in the game uh, doing his best to torture me, kill me, getting me killed as much as possible, as a baby, destroy me. Uh, even make the whole thing look exciting, like with the microphones and stuff like that. Call that like a training and stuff like this. It was a training. Training to make me mentally ill. It was really a training that was used to portray me as an evil person to the black community. In other words, give the reason to get me killed to the black community, present me to the world like evil baby from day one. And then it was on the other side with Josip Bros Tito who suggested finally, uh, after I was told it was the end of the program, really sometimes in 74, and really... It wasn't the end of the program. In 74, really, Richard Nixon only announced me that the program that the two of us, he and I, worked on, uh, that it's not going to work out, that the other side is just not willing to buy this, that uh, black people are bad people and uh, impossible to work with. You know, uh, The program which still continued all the way to 76 and after. Yeah. Even after the Richard Nixon was already gone, still the program still went on. And on the other side, Josip Bros Tito personally demanded from Richard Nixon and other politicians to meet with me 
in New York when I was sometimes, uh, I don't know, just about probably 1976, he started to suggest uh, American side that they did not really try their best to consolidate uh, blacks and white together. You know, he suggested them that it was it was an MK Ultra brainwash, a typical MK Ultra brainwash. On one side, Americans suggesting they didn't have any kind of white person so far. It was also Johnson, President Johnson. It wasn't only Richard Nixon. Not Johnson, not not only this, all these people, all this stuff, but <clears throat> that was uh, like an Anglo guy. This guy, this uh, the guy. No, I, I uh, was it um, when was he in the office? Succeeded by Richard Nixon, preceded by Kennedy. Um, uh uh. There was another. Uh, list American president. List American presidents. Let's just go. This is going to be much easier. Um. Carter, Gerald Ford, this is the name I was looking for. This is what I was looking for. They presented this case to me, to me with the Josip Bros Tito, uh, somewhere in New York, probably when I was five years old or something like that, six years old, five years old for sure, five years old or maybe even four years old, I don't know. I know that Josip Brostito lasted for a very, very, very long time and watched this satanism game, satanic game. So I know that I was really, really young. It must have happened, really must have happened sometimes between 74 and 76. And presented me this, Lucifer presented to me this satanism game, this satanic game, satanic ritualism known as MK Ultra presented me as they are not really successful at finding somebody who would reconcile. You see, I already got to know black problematic. Step number one from the US government, get to know black people. It wasn't for the Soviets, it wasn't for the Russians, I should say, and for Serbs or Yugoslavs, if you like that they are going to learn about the black people. It was about somebody else to learn the process of humiliation, beatings, um, total exploitation, physical, emotional, psychological exploitation to learn how, what, taken advantage of. That was myself. Me, baby, had to learn beating. And it was presented to me by the American presidents that, well, uh, we yet need to, uh, we yet need to find a person who will reconcile the black and white and they're all gonna come together and, you know, come together, love one another and so on and this and that, you know come together right now over me. Josip Bros Tito insisted in front of me that they didn't give a chance. And he, he does have a guy like this, that he can do that kind of stuff. And he was a police officer next to me, you can do that. He will do it, he can do that. Yeah, he can do it, he can do that. And it was American presidents that were, oh no, we doubt that he can do that, and so on. That's exactly what went on sometimes between 74, 76, I don't know. But I know that Josip Brosito lived 
for quite some time yet afterwards, so must have been in 1975, I say. Tito lasted another five years, at least on my picture. What exactly that meant, that there must be a guy like, I think the Louis Farrakhan was like the most perfect example of it. Louis Farrakhan resembled a lot Josip Brostito facially and just, I don't know, he was just uh, a handsome guy. Uh, I liked a handsome guy like this and um, he started, he became one of the very important dots on this American CIA FBI lynching map pertaining to my case by literally uh, even providing a refuge for me at one point from uh, the lynching from beating that went on that was totally clearly it was totally evident that it was Moscow and Belgrade behind in New York now uh, something that even evolved evolved into having Bill Clinton deliver me at his place uh, with literally uh, calming me down in his settings you know enjoying basically to see me calm you know uh, and uh, it just goes to tell what kind of state of mind I was that I was totally fucked up I mean shattered all over the place I mean truly something that people go to the psychiatric institutions to rehabilitate them to put them shit together basically so they can function somewhat at least that's what US government was doing they tortured into oblivion and so I found in Louis Farrakhan's place in early stages something like even a refuge uh, somebody who talked calmly and had a way basically to consider me like a grown-up he had this capacity to address me like uh, like a respected individual like a grown-up individual that was Louis Farrakhan you know in his environment I actually felt even again that I was worth something that I actually counted opposed to Josip Brostito opposed to New York opposed to what went on lynching total disregarding and scorn is where it ruled in his place there was no beatings and I was even considered like equal person uh, to adults even to his uh, followers people that he uh, associated with even uh, some politician if he hosted so uh, it didn't last very long he noticed the difference that my state uh, made for me at his place whenever I was delivered to him. And uh, this, sure enough, he taken an enormous advantage of uh, and uh, went ahead. I also noticed that I was also transferred directly from his, his place by him, by his bodyguards, by his people, to locations of the torture. And I also noticed that he participated and watched this torture. I, I noticed that he became, uh, you know, it was just a moment that I realized that he participated in the torture much, much, much longer than when I was delivered directly at his place. So Louis Farrakhan was one of the terrorists that U.S. government have contracted, Central Intelligence Agency, FBI contracted, subcontracted for already a very, very long time. It was obviously it was just something they fuck with, they play with. Uh, I even remember the words that I have to learn uh, who the guy is from American side, that I had, had to learn who the guy is. They were really driving me completely insane. That was Richard Nixon, and then what became Reagan and so on. They were doing their best to kill me. This videos, this stuff here, this is, fuck, this isn't about politician anymore, politics. This is about totally other issues. 
This is about the genocide that is still not being recognized, just as a psychiatry is still not being recognized. When I say psychiatry is still not being recognized, uh, I mean that uh, psychiatrists alone don't know what MKUltra is in my case. Police doesn't know what MKUltra is. They don't know what MKUltra is in general. They don't recognize any of that stuff. So that must also be that psychiatry doesn't exist. So that they kill you literally uh, without anybody knowing what was done to you. This is, this is the, the logic about this MKUltra from my perspective, from my point of view. Yeah, is basically there is no MK Ultra, and then there is also no psychiatry. There's no such thing as a psychiatry. There's just this um, labeling somebody as mentally ill, and then there is a big uh, a cloud basically in front and in the back of this uh, definition, basically without individual having any kind of ability to to anything basically and so the way I see Louis Farrakhan <clears throat> I have probably described best to you the way I see Louis Farrakhan uh, I uh, liked Louis Farrakhan because of his crazy wicked ways um, Kamala Harris studied Louis Farrakhan uh, because of me. Uh, they all kind of had a big impact on me. Um, I don't know. It could be that I had a bigger impact on him. I was a pioneer in driving Russians insane to the bitter end. People that were sane, people that were, uh, people that were uh, without any pressure, any kind of political, any any stress, anything at all. Um, people who have used my case literally to convince the Russian side that they are safe enough talking about the US government here, British royals, talking about uh, Western governments in general, uh, managed to convince and Russians felt that this was convincing enough that crime on open can be under psychiatry, under the so-called MK Ultra, so invincible, so nothing to fear from, that they started uh, a number of wars, the latest one in Ukraine. So, you know, um, it always add up for them without having to fear any kind of uh, consequences, uh, disregard, persecution, whatever, wherever that is. Uh, so, uh, in a way, this was extremely, extremely successful, extremely, extremely lucrative case, you know. Um, which, however, despite American double dealing, you know, I would call this a double dealing, British double dealing. On one side, they demonstrated Russians how much harm they do to me. On the other side, uh, they supported me through the Hollywood, through the film industry, getting people on the picture from Hollywood, from the world of sports, all kinds of people on the picture, uh, that, uh, you know, this MK Ultra non-existing thing, uh, whether you wanted to admit as a Russian, or you don't want to admit as a Russian, uh, there was a presence, there was my presence, I existed. Uh, and as much as I didn't want to admit, even Chechnya found its way out of this Russian empire of evil. You know, uh, interesting, America and British brought one right back. There was also a second war against Chechnya, 
I already have talked about. And that was the same shit against many other countries. Soviet Empire, however, did crumble and they did lost control over the Baltic states, Poland and Ukraine, Romania, Hungary, Bulgaria. So and a number of countries did manage to liberate itself, you know, and this liberation still went on for the cost of, as I stated, Chechnya and many other countries, Georgia and so on. Georgia is in a different situation, but, you know, it's getting there in a problem area. But uh, many Abkhazia, many these Caucasian countries uh, that lost its independence against Russia, uh, despite gaining independence somehow, uh, lost the wars basically it turned into something else and so on so um, whether they wanted to take me serious or they didn't want to take me serious uh, in Balkans also Yugoslavia have fallen apart and finally several nations break free from the Serbs uh, tiny little nations managed to break free from the Serbs which is quite unbelievable People don't even understand how remarkable that stuff is and will not understand till the catastrophe will repeat. So, I, based on my views, the way I view Louis Farrakhan, this is just, might not necessarily be the case. It might, it could be different. It could be that, uh, you know, uh, he really is anti-Semitic, that he really is uh, you know, anti-white person, that he really is whatever he is. But sorry, in my, in my, from my point of view, and that should actually even help him out. Uh, I don't really think that Louis Farrakhan is anti-Semitic. And I don't really think that Louis Farrakhan necessarily is uh, uh, a racist. I don't even subscribe to that point of view. Uh, I think he is just a part of the modern American U.S. government clusterfuck politics that is being really, really successfully implemented by uh, imaging to the world the perception about something that doesn't necessarily really exist. That's what I think it is. I saw this uh, million march man here, million in 1995, there was a million uh, march on Washington DC and then I created sometimes in 2000 and uh, I don't even know what the hell it was let me see if it's still a trace of it uh, contrary to this stuff uh, which Louis Farrakhan commenced in 1995 uh, this was extremely, extremely racist, bigoted stuff. Uh, I started to do my cause of my own, and it was uh, Washington uh, marching. Uh, no, marching on Washington D.C. Uh, marching on Washington D.C. Uh, whites, South Africa, that kind of stuff. March on Washington. This is for the jobs and freedom. And I wanted to march on a Washington DC for the sake of the South African white minority. Uh, I don't know where this would be even coming from. Uh, this is just a tab that opened uh, a 52 year old. You can see there is no back, no whatever. There is a tab right there. I'm not interested in seeing that kind of stuff at all. Uh, March on Washington DC. 
South Africa White. I started the cause March on Washington DC. Uh, once they threw me inside of the psychiatric hospital, that's when I started to uh, That's when I started to uh, That's when I that's when I took a turn and uh, I had enough of this black prejudice, this black fascism hatred because regardless of what I stated to you that Louis Farrakhan most likely is one of the images American government is projecting to the world deliberately so that it would look like this and like that. Uh, I was inside of the psychiatric hospital basically after 40 years of bestiality that I endured also in great much from the black people. Mostly from the black people uh, up to age 18 mostly was from the black people the violence that went on inside of the New York is impossible to even describe Russians preferably transferred me to New York it did, New York was a preferred location for the Russians and for the Serbs a lynching in Belgrade New York was uh, in New York New York was practically a home for the Russians and for the Serbs uh, which disapproved Texas, California, whatever state in the US but embraced New York and New York was really kind to the Russians in New York you can get fucking lynched they can kill you whatever they do uh, nobody will ever find out the truth because to the New York people people in the New York the main thing is United Nations the main thing to the people in the New York is that they keep the positive image about themselves uh, in front of the world, actually in front of the politicians, regardless of how bestial, dictatorial, whatever they are, as long as these people, they pay bills and they're in a good standing with the US government, they do anything for the most what is described as a dictator or so whatever no fucking problem uh, the barrel of American corruption criminality that Central Intelligence Agency is running with a Federal Bureau investigation simply is bottomless sorry to say this but you know these are facts once thrown into the psychiatric institution in 2013 after four years of MK Ultra bestiality I figure out that these people in South Africa really are not having fun. It's also where MK Ultra bestiality went on in a big way, uh, where I also endured a lot of. I don't want to refer to that racism. I was. I explained myself what it was, uh, and so I. I started my different kind of cause. I started my cause is going to be marching on a Washington D.C. Uh, for the sake of the white minority in South Africa. Something I no longer necessarily subscribe myself to, especially because of the solidarity I got from the people from South Africa for doing this stuff. Uh, and even more so due to crime, which I had to endure. Uh, from American, from the British, from the German, from all our Western governments, they stormed me and they wanted to fucking lynch me. Uh, suggested me by British royals that this is still their jurisdiction, that the monarch of the South Africa, in fact, is uh, Queen Elizabeth. Now it's King Charles. Uh, I was literally beaten up inside of the Britain. Uh, at the Buckingham Palace in front of the Cyril Ramaphosa who came for a visit before he officially came for a visit to the King Charles 
so they would convince them that they has got nothing to do with them and everything is fine the way it's supposed to be you see that's new york that's how things really in the real world and reality that's how the real world functions this is basically the way it functions Bill Clinton was the one that figured out that I mentally associate myself with uh, March on DC million man that I even named the cause as a as a million man march on the Washington DC hell I think I even really named one like this uh, million man march on Washington DC however this was not in 95 uh, I came up with my cause sometimes in hell I think it was 2014 you know what I mean uh, that's like nine years after Louis Farrakhan came up with his cause which was I understand racist uh, that's so what is written here it was what is it was anti-semitic and racist uh, in 1995 well one thing i'm gonna say to you where where and how louis farrakhan got the idea for his cause louis farrakhan got idea for the, to name one like a million man uh, march on a washington dc from me uh, that happened because like it is this is really how I know for a lot of things that I stated are factual. Um, even an enemy one time with the Russians and with the Serbs. Yeah, that's what Louis Farrakhan wanted to assure me that he was totally on my side with, with the stuff which he did not notice that I noticed about the environment I was in. That I noticed that it wasn't like this, that, that it wasn't that, you know, uh, he added to that torture, you know, a lot of, he added to that fire, a lot of fuel, so did so, so that I could feel myself more comfortable and better in his place. He observed me how good I feel in his environment, so he added extra to it, you know, uh, and wanted to assure me that, you know, uh, he doesn't see himself in in Russians and in Serbs and so on. That's what Bill Clinton did a really good job at convincing me that Louis Farrakhan, you know, this is my ally, this is somebody Bill Clinton was involved since my early childhood too. Uh, he wanted to assure me that, you know, that this is, this is the right guy, you know, this you go, uh, you know, Islam, you know, Muslim and, you know, just doesn't, see himself in that kind of stuff and you know he's gonna be well the thing about it is that Louis Farrakhan had a totally different ideas from myself not necessary from bill clinton and what louis farrakhan wanted to to accomplish was that little conversation we had with yossi brostit or nixon or what is it uh it wasn't uh, uh, lyndon johnson but uh, i don't know a uh, gerald ford uh he had in his vision uh, that he's going to deliver and make through the beatings, through the torture, a person that will be, you know, what U.S. government was using me for some kind of reconciliation through through murder, basically. Through complete burnout, murder, giving free hands to the blacks to do whatever they wanted to do as far as violence. And see how far this kind of maybe even maybe even see how far this kind of crime can go with eastern and european governments what how much they're capable to accomplish because this crime was completely still is completely mindless 
<laughs> code of silence basically how how much it can be how how far it can be what what is it can be that they can get away with it and so on what how much can they tolerate basically get idea about what the fuck we have here in slovenia and uh, eastern europe they pretty much formed a good picture about what this part of the world what this was this shit was all about so uh you know louis farrakhan went from the hater of the serbs that's how he presented himself to uh to utterly embracing uh, Serbian and Russian culture because of me. He, by the way, uh, came up with a theory. Uh, this is a theory about the Jakub. Jakub. Uh, the Jakub. Jakub was an uh, evil scientist. Jakub uh, originated. Uh, uh, 6,600 years ago uh, and he was the one who created the race of the devils uh, apparently according to the uh, Louis Farrakhan uh, this Jakub this was me this was I he pointed at me when he had me in his place I was a Jakub I was the one who created this race of devils uh, so this race of devils whites not necessary is uh, a bad race you know what i mean because obviously it did not exist till i pop up on the picture if you understand me and this is completely in line with the british and american philosophy white philosophy the white house of the u.s congress they they did their best to present the world as the most evil creature that ever walked basically every crime the fuck they took place I was guilty and so whatever the British royals were known for, whatever the worst people were known for, the only thing they had to do is basically associate with me and people get to see somebody even more evil. Through the torture create person that is even more evil while pointing that uh, even the evil person had ability to point finger point at me. Uh, just by keeping me around them, just whatever happened, whatever they screw it up, if you want to put it this way, uh, they had the ability to just say I was next to him. Simple as this, basically simple as this. So Louis Farrakhan had this extraordinary ability to change, to shift, to shape shift, basically change his skin. And maybe we'll again change his skin if something bad was to happen to me. He hoped for the worst. This is a man who was obsessed with the death threats giving me my face on how I'm going to die in a misery and I don't know what. And the, and the deals that he already made, they already made with, a, with whomever and so on. Uh, he, I'm not going to say that he created Barack Obama, but... This is what the U.S. government literally have used. This Islamist extreme is the so-called movement to support genocide against me. They every time evoked, called upon, uh, just basically stating that it's I who, uh, you know, cannot be saved simply because... Uh, because of this Islamic uh, radical Farrakhan, all kinds of uh, uh, extremists that they will go and they will revolt and they will cause looting and destruction. And I don't know, it's going to be all the black people in America that will revolt against the U.S. government if uh, they were trying to save me and stuff like this. So the psychiatry on which Louis Farrakhan insisted so much is he giving the the reason to Obama why I should be thrown into the security hospital because obviously according to the logic of the US government which interpreted with Obama this stuff and you know, look what you did to this guy look what you did to that guy look what you did here and look what you did to that obviously you know one plus one according to facts that I stated here clearly it becomes that 
you, U.S. government, you are Louis Farrakhan. And Louis Farrakhan is you. You know, the difference between you and Louis Farrakhan uh, is just in, in a tale, in a fable that you lie, that you tell people that the way you write and you have all this, you know, your persecution and your trials and even killings and your death, your deaths, many of which would end up with a fake death certificates and stuff like that. They are not really necessary. Uh, I spoke about uh, this girl here, about this, this girl here from the Martin Luther King family. A daughter. Uh, this one here. Let me see. Oh no, this is not a daughter. Uh, Yolanda King is what I meant. Uh, she passed away when she was 51, Santa Monica, California. Uh, from what I know, so just that you know, that's me, I, she got married to a guy. She dated some guy, and from what I know, from what I recall, she eventually got married to this guy. This is a married lady in some household in California. If you're going to look for her, uh, hopefully that she didn't die, you're going to find her in some house married to somebody while being listed over there as uh, uh, literally has gone at age 51. This ladies, this black ladies, this, uh, this daughters of this black leaders and stuff like this, uh, I don't subscribe myself to any of this stuff. These are all. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it to you, okay? Uh, what is this here? This is uh, what is this here? Let me see that stuff here. Uh, children? How many children did he had? Zero, right? How many children did he have? Zero, right? So we go to the Louis Farrakhan. He had a bunch of kids. Uh, and he did so, told me even, nine kids because I like the number nine. Yeah. So now we can go and we can check this ladies and you will see the truth. It's not even such a bad looking. He was lying to me. I know so because he said to me that he would give me uh, the daughters and stuff like this. That he would even give me three. He talked about something about the Harlem and Harlem and stuff like that. And the truth is that... Uh, the fact of the matter is that none of his daughter had any children. I saw it. I checked his numbers. And when I looked at his numbers, where are the children from this woman here? They have no children. The women have no children. The sons have children, but where are the children from the women? There was another figure that I was looking at. Uh, what did I go through today? Uh, Louis Farrakhan, Luther King, and <coughs> there must be another one. Uh, there must be another one. Uh, let me see that. Uh. Yeah, I'm going to use this browser. What? Uh, let me see. No, no. Okay. One, two, 
one deceased. The one who was deceased was the one who was involved in a lot of violence. Anyhow, uh, this kind of uh, reconciliation, I'm not even talking to Louis Farrakhan right now. This is not the message really for Louis Farrakhan. Um, he is just, uh, he's just as much guilty as I stated. The one who ran this violence, I was really on a target I did explain who was doing this kind of stuff and uh, you know he got attention from it he he made money with it um, I explained the terror that went on inside of his house what kind of insanity this was he tortured into oblivion and he was the one who supported psychiatry and according to his own words will wait to see me die and stuff like this uh, He was obsessed with the idea of how much suffering I have gone through and I yet I still was alive. So man, if this is not like genocido, is anything it can be in this world, then what the fuck I don't know what to say. This shit this stuff so fucking murderous that that it's unbelievable. Anyhow, these daughters of his, they're not even so bad looking. Uh you know a liar if he would give me three of these daughters and stuff like that that the way he even talked about that he would and la 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 and stuff like that the thing is he did that's the thing so the point i was trying to make it doesn't matter whatever the point i was trying to make here is that yeah those girls are older than myself uh i don't know which one i was uh, uh okay it was a Farrakhan, it was uh, Martin Luther King. Um, let me see this here. But they should have the the children, I don't understand, because they got married and they did have the children, so I, I think it's like not listed or whatever. Yeah, I would say that this is not listed and so on, yeah. Because uh, uh, his daughters, they were really, really good looking, I mean, you know, one daughter and so on and so you know when i consider this kind of stuff this is not this is this is this is fucking unrealistic what i'm trying to say is these people work a lot on a schizophrenia their offers the way they offered and talk and all this stuff is just if you would look this stuff here this this was a number of women that didn't have children and um I don't know if they were so crazy about me because this is what the MK Ultra is. They make you believe like you're the only one, like you are the one and only one, and it's you and it's you and it's you. Oh man, that's just a bullshit, a lie, a manipulation. He was Louis Farrakhan is a manipulator. Uh, manipulator who acted according to scenario of Central Intelligence Agency Federal Bureau investigators, U.S., if you want to call that piece of shit, excuse of a human being, I'm going to say, William J. Burns, if you want to call that a diplomat, all right, whatever, but I think it's a bureaucrat, I think the whole fucking thing is a bureaucracy. Uh, they broker crime based on necessities or I should say accordingly with uh, preference preferential preferences urgencies I'm gonna say you know 
That's ba- that's a story of America, of United States of America. America is one big fucking lie. You know what the United States of America is? <laughs> I don't get quite uh, what I anticipated just right now I'm gonna get uh, there is a picture that should now scroll down somehow and on that picture uh, it's George Bush, this was always like that, uh, that should be holding his right hand up uh, because he presented that like that. Um, just like William J. Burns, the same thing. No, no, this one here. This is this is for the... This was the main MK Ultra brainwash photo that George Bush had used. I don't understand when entering his name here. How come I don't see one? I don't see. Oh, hey, shit. Still, it's here. Look at it. Still, it's here. That anything, anything, anything is going to be um, the information accessible. Uh, it will be, it will be, it will be. Just call my name and I'll be there. We'll support the truth about MK Ultra case. Oh, just take this upper portion of it like that. We're gonna take this out like this, like that, like this, and then uh, uh, I think it was uh, <clears throat> Joe Biden who talked about uh, A lying dog pony soldier. So you, we have a dog here and we have a pony. Okay. Alright, I don't know which one I would... Oh, I think this would be appropriate because uh, it's just more of a... I would say related to the white power. So what I'll do is as a, as a Jacob, I'm just gonna attach this here somehow. I can't because it's too small and I don't wanna really waste my time. But there is your definition of United States of America. Definitely not George Bush. I'm not going to go uh, German against a German Shepherd because it's just too many prejudice and this is really not against animals. This is anyhow a really, really wrong 
picture to use for somebody like George Bush anyhow. There is your fucking definition about United States of America if you ask me. I'll give it to you one. Whichever way you like, whichever way you want to see it. Uh, there is a right hand right there. And there you have a man with be behind with standing up on a heart. The National Library. And the National Library is this here. This is a National Library. The real National Library is this here. And what is this thing here? This is a throwback and you can see Joe Biden in 1980 and you can do the same thing with everybody. And the truth is, the fact of the matter is that they did have me post next to them to remind me of MK Ultra events. However, a little bit more brutal reality is that I was thrown into the psychiatric hospital in 2012. Once I started to discuss about MK Ultra that took place in Sweden in 2010, uh, things, things had gone from bad to the totally uh, impossible. The goal was to kill me. Something that uh, I experienced when with the Louis Farrakhan, uh, the Serbs became so excited all of a sudden. Uh, and I didn't finish about the one million march on the Washington DC. The million march on the Washington DC I started in Louis Farrakhan's head when insisting him during MK Ultra, not to him but to others that I already explained, that Serbs planned on stopping Slovenian independence with a one million march to Ljubljana. They wanted to have a million march in Ljubljana, the million Serbs that would come to Ljubljana, they will lodge here in Ljubljana, they will uh, express the brotherhood with the Slovenian, which totally, in total, there is two million people in Slovenia. And so this is where, this was way before 95, when Louis Farrakhan decided he's going to do something like this, not to award me with something, but rather to express this as a support for the Serbs is key. You know, you can create, you can post next to somebody and you can create memories for somebody so that he could recall you in, a, in whatever way. Uh, and you can do this from the present point of view or from the unpleasant point of view. You can be pleasant with a person or you can be extremely unpleasant with the person. That, however, British royal stated, uh, that would be all dependent on me, how I would be with the people. I don't think I had this kind of luxury. That National Library, it's beautiful. The Google did a beautiful job. But even today, I am still unconfirmed case of MK Ultra of a psychiatric victimization. And I'm almost 53 years old. So I don't have so much to look forward to life as all of you had. Uh, if I'm going to survive this at all. Uh, and, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't really subscribe myself to the National Library point of view or to the Central Intelligence Agency um, that can come out and say, by the way, well, you know, we can't hide it. We can't lie anymore. Uh, so we're just going to say it's true. This for me is not uh, citizenship and this for me is not assistance. This for me, you know, if you, you go and you rob the bank, you kill people uh, and you're hiding yourself uh, and maybe even leaving certain clues about what goes on. 
Uh, I don't think that when they get you, when they catch you, when they finally get and trace to you, uh, that this police, courts, investigators, they would view you as a friend of theirs, or would they? As somebody who voluntarily disclosed the truth. Well, this is what the police is trying to do these days. They're doing their best, basically, to excuse a genocide, in this case, extermination procedure, with giving different clues about that it could be, it would be, it could, you know, That's a lousy kind of help. That's a lousy kind of assistance. Uh, you can talk to computer like I'm doing right now and you never get any kind of response. Even on this video, I'm not going to get any kind of response. But this is my response to central intelligence, actually to American democracy. Due to something I deem never the truth is going to even you know, contemplate it and contemplate on something that would, you know, for, so for the truth that would never even come out for what it is. I took time to make sure that people understand here what took place, what went on, and for whoever also is interested, understand the truth about United States of America if you really don't know one, this beautiful democracy, this beautiful Western world, uh, the diplomacy, if you like, how it all operates. It operated and it operates exactly the way I, I use the case of the Louis Farrakhan also to demonstrate you. So I don't subscribe really to any, any points of uh, whatever is written under the Louis Farrakhan accomplishments. Uh, and not ADL and not I don't I don't believe any of these people I have gone through too much I experience ADL and uh, Southern Poverty Law Center uh, I've seen what these people can do what these people have done their involvement in a genocide against me I know what the FBI is all about I know how it all works and well look around and you're gonna see yourself how it all works that was the video dedicated to Louis Farrakhan and his family. Uh, one of his children supposedly died, uh, listed as dead. Uh, you go and you make your own call. I remember the problems that they had within the family because of this case for which they anticipated it would come out. <coughs> And it's what really, really trouble was. They didn't know what to do uh, with sixty years old. Farrakhan Jr. died. This was a particularly violent individual. So. All right, that was six years ago. It could be that he really did. However, um, he was involved in a lot of violence. You have to understand that. And I'm not even sure precisely why um, you can see here with the Barack Obama uh, it was a, such an obsession getting me killed through psychiatry you know so <laughs> for those that I how many death threats from Louis Farrakhan I received and some really weird shit well quite many quite many when you allow for the stuff like this to go on and on and on and on and on 
uh, you actually really, really can create uh, a problem. You know, you can actually really, uh, you can create some real problems with a justice system if the justice system by any chance try to take control over the situation you can create on a false beliefs idea in the people that they can go and they can just it can turn out to be really nasty stuff if you try to mediate and uh, finally stop the crime based on which somebody even managed to collect a lot of support believers if you like uh, and who actually believes that he have a control over the constitution uh, even the right to lynching and stuff like this uh, and will cause loots and radical attacks on people and all kinds of stuff if something was to come out against his wish uh, that's actually not even his fault that's actually really misleading somebody into into crazy character basically into into creating idea in the individual that he have certain to the certain great extent actually ability to to control to govern basically in the US that's exactly what happened in many cases why are they hiding this brother here a b a b are initials from my first and from my last name this one here was much less aggressive about it uh but he did participate it in lynching he was one of those guys if you're not going to be nice to me and this and that basically U.S. government gave him the ability to use um, like a dirigent for the violence, you know, those sticks that they use to dirigent basically MK Ultra violence. This was an individual who transported to the lynching mobs and stuff and observed and documented and stuff like that. And all he wanted is basically to accept him for me to accept him as equal so you know sorry this uh, so much stinks this American politic it's really based on extermination genocide on my case it is and I'm not about to let it go I do it for free for world to know that tremendous support for the Moscow for the Belgrade the people that I described today, that's how it all went on. If you want to know about it, by the age 18, I didn't know that the white people live in a New York City. Utterly, I didn't know there is white people that live in a New York City. Serbs, Russians transported only to the blacks for the violence. And so did Slovenes.